check out that Thunderhead up there. Thunderheads in time lapse are one of my favourite things. Watch this, watch how cool this looks. Wow, that's amazing. Hello again. Um, today I'm out on location and I'm just scouting around to try and find something interesting to photograph. Now I went for a bit of a walk through here. Um, I had a look at Google Maps and looking at Google Maps I thought I saw a couple of lone trees. Uh, but I got out here, there's nothing I like. I walked past this little bush a couple of times and I thought, you know what, I keep looking at it. I, as I walked past, I'd keep looking back. And, you know, sometimes that's all it takes. Sometimes all it takes is just to walk around a little bit. And if you keep looking at something for some reason, try some photos of it, okay? It's a subject. It, it, it's completely not my style. It's not the sort of thing I normally take. Um, but let me show you and let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so there it is. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a dead tree out in the middle of nowhere, so it is giving me desert vibes. So I'm going to get some shots, we'll probably do black and white, we might even have a bit of fun in Photoshop and see what we can do with this. We'll go through a few different styles in Photoshop um, and see if we can give you some ideas on finding a style. Okay, so this might be your style of thing, um, it's certainly not mine, but you don't know unless you take it, okay just shoot everything go out take photographs of everything see what you can do with it see if there's something in there that takes your interest um, and like I said it's not my sort of thing but I might come away with something that I like okay just because I don't in my brain I'm thinking I don't like it I might get home and think wow it actually looks okay so let's, let's just work it let's work it and see what we can do so f14 two one hundredths of a second um, I'm just checking my live view my histogram is perfect Okay, ISO 100, F14, two one hundredths of a second. I'm going to just try it from different angles. I'll get some down low. Okay, really give it that desert theme. Uh, some to the left, some to the right. Okay, some in portrait mode. Okay, I'm liking the sand. Okay, so it's really giving me that desert vibe. I'm kind of lining it up so I've got the sand running towards the tree. I tried some over there the lines were running through the scene. I didn't like it. So now I'm sort of lined it up so we've got more of the sand where the wind has blown the waves. We've got these nice ripples in the sand. Okay, like I said, not my sort of thing, but it's interesting. Okay, it's a very interesting, it's a dead tree in a desert barren area. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's all I need. I don't need a lot of shots of it. There's only so much you can do with something like this. Okay, so that's it for now. Let's head to the editing room. Um, and have a bit of a play around with these images and watch exactly what we can do with them. Now onto the developing side of things. And the way I develop my images is I just try and remember the scene, okay? It was stormy, it was raining, the sun was in and out. Um, it was quite dramatic, okay? Just as I got to the car, it poured with rain. So that's what I'm going to recreate. I'm going to create a stormy looking, light coming in and out, dramatic scene. So I'll show you how, how I go about doing this. And again, these are just ideas, okay? There, there's no certain way of editing an image. I'm just going to give you some ideas and hopefully you find something in here that's useful. Okay, so I'm going to do this one in Photoshop. This first part, exactly the same in Lightroom. Eventually I will actually take it into Photoshop and we'll do a few layers and just put the finishing touches on the image. Uh, but for Lightroom users, this first part will all be the same. So first thing I'm going to do is just fix our optics. We're going to remove chromatic aberration, use our lens profile, that will just remove any distortion. Looking at it straight away, the sky's too bright. I remember that sky being quite dramatic, okay? The sky was definitely darker than that. So what I'm going to do is grab a masking tool, and I just like to use the linear gradient. I don't like the sky, especially when we've got uh, a tree above the horizon. I just find the sky mask doesn't work great. I don't mind if I have a bit of a silhouette through that tree. So linear gradient, just by holding my shift key, I can click and drag and bring that straight down and it keeps everything nice and level. Uh, if you don't hold the shift key, any sort of movement, uh, it will shift. So hold the shift key and that will also show us that our horizon isn't quite straight. So we'll deal with that later. 
And I'm going to bring it down a bit because we're going to deal with our foreground separately. So somewhere around about there, bring the exposure down. I'm going to bring my highlights down quite a bit. Okay, I want to take the sting out of that sky because I do remember it being quite dark. Uh, a little bit of contrast will kind of add a bit of drama to the sky. Somewhere around about there, we might even bring down the whites a bit because we're going to add light to this image. So I do want the sky to be fairly dark because so we're going to add some, some, some light. So somewhere around about there, that's sort of a little bit closer to how I remember it. So there's our original raw file. And then we've just darkened down the sky. We've started to bring a bit more drama back into that sky. From here, um, the next thing I want to do is start to bring in some of that light. And a good little trick to bring in light, if we come up to our masking tools, create a new mask, and we're going to use our radial gradient. So if I grab a radial gradient and just click and drag, and what I'm going to do is make it quite big and quite narrow, and then just put it into position. So click and drag, we can move the angle, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in the light from that top right hand corner and then just bring this in somewhere around about there. And now watch this, if I just lift my exposure and I'll overcook it in this case, okay, bring my exposure and now we're just adding light to the middle of the frame. We can move this around and we can put that light wherever we want it. Okay, so that's why I kind of deliberately made my sky a little bit darker because I knew I was going to brighten it up. Okay, so for start, let, let's get it on the tree. Let's get that light beaming in on the tree. Um, might even just warm it up a little bit. Okay, like I said, we're going to have some fun with this image just to give you some ideas of what we can do. So we'll warm it up a bit. Um, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so again, let's have a look at our original RAW file. And now we've just brought in a little bit of light into the middle of the scene. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more light. Okay, I do remember that light coming in and out quite a bit. So this time what I'm going to do is grab a brush tool. So create a mask, we're going to grab our brush. And what I'm going to do is emphasize the bright areas. So in other words, I'm going to bring up my highlights and bring up my whites. And just by square bracket keys, we can make our brush either bigger or smaller. And anywhere where I have light, I'm going to lighten it even more. Okay, so effectively we're, uh, we're dodging. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of dodging and burning with this. So wherever I see bright areas, I'm going to brighten them up even more. Okay, I want to keep that shadow behind the tree. So just sort of brighten up that bit in the middle. Then I'm going to create another mask and another brush. And this time we're going to darken everything. So we bring down our shadows, bring down our blacks. And now I'm going to paint in those darker areas and really emphasize those shadows. Now this is too much, but I'll show you a quick way we can sort of deal with that. I'm going to do this fairly quickly just to give you an idea of what we can do. Um, just essentially darkening my shadows and keeping my highlights nice and bright. Okay, so a little bit overcooked. So all we need to do now, if we select that mask that we've just overcooked, down here we have an amount. And if I bring that amount down, it takes it all the way out. So I'm just going to bring it up subtly, somewhere around about there. Maybe add a little bit more in the middle there just to really get those, the darker areas quite dark. Okay, so somewhere like that. And now we're really emphasizing the light. Okay, we've brought light into the scene. Okay, coming in from that angle. And then that's about it from there. What I'm going to do now is bring it into Photoshop to do the finishing touches. So if we just go open. Now, the, the sky is too bright for my liking. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a little bit of a, an exposure blend here. And what I'm going to do with that layer selected, I'm going to press Control or Command and J. So Control or Command and J. Now that we've got a copy of that layer, what I'm going to do is come up to Filter camera raw filter, and that's essentially opening it back to where we just were. Now what I'm going to do, this part of the sky is a bit too bright for my liking, so I'm going to bring down my highlights all the way, bring down the whites all the way, crank up our contrast a fair bit, uh, and maybe even just darken it a little bit. Might add a little bit of warmth to it, just to warm it up, just a tiny bit. So somewhere around about there, 
Now, I only want it to affect this part of the sky. I don't want it to affect the whole scene. I just want it to affect this part of the sky. So what I'm going to do is I am going to grab our background layer. Again, Control or Command and J to make a copy. Put that layer on top. Okay, so now that that layer is on top, that's our original photo. And I just want to reveal this part from the underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a luminosity mask, which is just going to select the brightest parts of an image. So with this top layer selected, we're going to create a mask. I'm going to come up to channels. I'm going to hold my control key, control or command and select RGB. And that's just selecting the brightest parts of the image. And now if I just come back to layers, make sure I'm clicked on that layer. And then if I just press Control or Command and I, that's going to invert that mask and essentially black out the brightest parts. So if we just have a look at what we've done there, if I hide that underneath layer, you see it's just darkened down the brightest parts and it's left the rest of the image sort of where it was. Okay, so that's just sort of taking a little bit of the sting out of that sky, but still keeping the light, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just going to go layer and flatten image. And finally, it, it, I want to make it a bit more contrasty. So a good way to make it extra contrasty, we can come down to our adjustment layers, which is this little circle down the bottom. Grab our curves and just do an S curve. So if we just bring up the top part, bring down the bottom part, that's going to an S curve is going to add contrast. Okay, uh, if we just eyeball on and off, we can see how far we've gone. Uh, in that case, it's probably a bit too far. So if I just bring my opacity back a little bit, okay, so somewhere around about there. And that's about it. Okay, so we've brought in some light from the angle. We've, we've added drama to our relatively flat raw file. Okay, and as a final touch, I've covered this before. I think, you know, an image like this might work good with an Orton effect. So to do an Orton effect, again, I'm going to press Control or Command and J. I'm going to come up to my filters. I'm going to go to Blur. I'm going to go to Gaussian Blur. And turn it up to around about a radius of 30. Press OK. Come over here, change our blending type to Screen. Come over to Image, Apply Image, OK. OK, and then if there's before and there's after. So the Orton effect has just given it a bit more of a glow. OK, so a bit overdone for my liking. So we'll grab our opacity, bring that down a little bit. So then it's just applying a subtle Orton effect to our image. OK, and that's about it. That's about all I'm going to do with that. So as you can see, like where we started with a very flat raw file, we've added some drama, we've added some light, and we've just brought the image to life, okay? That's a bit more how I remember the scene. I do remember those clouds were very stormy, they closed in quickly, it rained, but at the same time we had that light coming in and out of the scene, okay? So that's it for this video. Hopefully you did like it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It, it helps me understand what people want to see. So if this is the sort of thing you want to see, give it a thumbs up. And I will be doing a live stream, a very, very exciting live stream soon. Okay, so by the time this video is released, um, I will be in the planning process of a new live stream. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you did find something useful in there. So thank you again, and I will see you soon. Um... Lightning, can we add lightning into the shot? Mountain ranges, lightning, birds, reflection. Yeah, anyway, dreaming now. I think this might be a fail, but we'll see. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.